Hi, need a ride? Hop on in. I'm headed to Julia's Trucking Cafe. Come on, let's go. We made it just in time. Come on, let's go get a seat. Hey everybody, welcome to Julia's Trucking Cafe. Everybody get a seat and something to drink? Good deal. Now sit back and enjoy the show. As always, I have lots of news to get to. Boy, has it been a crazy week this last week. What about all those thunderstorms and all lightning storms and stuff? I ran into it not once, not twice, but three different times over a three-day period. Man alive, it was raining so bad you couldn't even see anything. And... Before I get to the news, I wanted to remind everyone, or if you're a new listener to the show, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our cafe store. So I have a cafe store on the website at where you could find it at Julia's Truck at Cafe dot com. On the at the cafe store, you could find apparel like long sleeve T shirts, men's and women's short sleeve T shirts for both men and women, and also hoodies. I also have a page of some electronics, which I'm building uh, as I go along a little at a time. And I added a new page of wellness stuff that I'm going to be adding. Um, so it, it it is a lot doing all of this and then still having to drive 70 hours a week. As I've mentioned in other episodes, I don't mean to um, have a pity party or anything. I don't need that. I'm just letting everybody know this is, this is time consuming with trying it also to work a full-time job and um, do all this as well. I'm just trying to provide a service to y'all. Because uh, I know it's hard for us ladies to find clothes out here, something different, something kind of cutesy, um, uh, more women stuff. There's also ladies tanks on there as well. Before I forget that you know it's in you don't you can't always fit into a Walmart, and now in different states they're booting trucks and stuff. So you know stuff to, that you can get sent to you um out on the road or you know when you get home or something like that something a little bit different to wear or use or whatever also and we have a wellness page now as i mentioned where you could get an emergency kit of 300 pieces of band bandages and and gauze and um first aid tape and that kind of thing for only 15 dollars. and i have compression socks and the reason why i do compression socks is because a lot of times i see drivers that are suffering from um, they're just starting diabetes or their legs are swelling and um, you can wear compression socks even if you don't your legs don't swell they really help as far as if you stand on your feet all the time a lot of nurses wear them a lot of waitresses wear them and um, I notice that my legs even swell and from uh, water retention and stuff and these compression socks don't look like the old granny style with the uh, uh, neuter tan kind of compression socks these are uh, really cool different colors they even have the kind just for the foot a uh, little anklet kind of socks so if you wouldn't mind i humbly i ask that you check out the website at juliastruckatcafe.com just look around under the cafe menu cafe store um I would really greatly appreciate it. And let me know in the comments of what you think. So let's get to the news now that after I said all that. Um, nearly 700 um, illegal immigrants have been arrested during an ice raid on chicken plants. One of the largest poultry producers says that they did not operate their first shift due to the biggest immigration raid in the last decade. Federal authorities raided several Mississippi chicken plants, arresting hundreds of workers. This happened on August Wednesday, August 7th. Approximately 600 agents with the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement 
ex- executed federal search warrants at seven food processing plants throughout the state of Mississippi, which has been described as the largest immigration sting in the nation in the last decade. The chicken plant raids had reportedly been planned for several months. Locations that were raided by federal agents include uh, Coke uh, Foods, processing plant in Morton, Mississippi, and Pico Foods located in Canton, Mississippi, among others that were raided. Following the raids, ICE arrested 680 people who were allegedly working illegally in the U.S. Agents also seized business and employment records. ICE they said in a, they released at a press release. Those who were arrested were bused to a military hangar to be interviewed and processed for any immigration violations. Uh, Coke Foods or Cook Foods said that they were unable to operate their first shift on Thursday because of the raids. Um, uh, Coke's Morton facility and it's spelled K O C H. Could be Koch, could be Cook, you know, you, it's, it's unusual how to pronounce that name. Uh, which employs more than a thousand people, did not operate the first shift today, and is trying to determine how many employees were detained by federal authorities. The company intends to continue to operate all shifts at the facility and minimize customer impact, end quote. The companies that were raided could also face charges. Well, of course. And then, pun intended, they pay them chicken feed. So they need to start, you know, in other places. And I may have reported this in the previous show. So if I have, I apologize if it's if it's double. It's just um, one of those days today. It's like I can't, you know. Have you ever had the day where you just can't wake up no matter how hard you try? And in other news, a serious multiple semi-truck crash on I-70 claims another driver. A truck driver lost his life on I-70 in Missouri early April, Friday, April 9th. This crash occurred around 3.30 in the morning. Police say that nearly, uh, that near, excuse me, police say that near mile marker 98 on I-70, an eastbound semi-truck crossed over into the westbound lanes and struck two other semi-trucks. One of the trucks involved was totally engulfed in flames after the collision. The Missouri State Highway Patrol confirmed that one truck driver died in the crash. The condition of the other two truck drivers at that time of the article was written as unknown. And this crash closed I-70 for hours and resulted in mile-long backups. And what happened with the crash is still under investigation. At, at that time. And I find this is pretty cool. A truck driver grills a clueless presidential hopeful over FMCSA regulations in the video in this article. A Democratic presidential candidate was cornered at an Iowa State Fair by a trucker who wanted very specific answers to his questions about trucking regulations. Um, the week of like the 8th or the 9th, at the Ohio State Fair, C-SPAN cameras were rolling as candidate John Delaney addressed a crowd and took questions from voters. Truck driver Jeremy Walters begins a conversation, interrogation, by asking Delaney, is he familiar with trucking regulations? When Delaney says he is, Walters launches into a series of detailed questions on ELDs, driver pay, hours of service regulations, and whether FMCSA leadership should be required to hold a CDL. Throughout the exchange, a visibly uncomfortable Delaney tries his best to respond to the questions, but is forced to admit that he doesn't have enough specific information to provide full answers. And let's listen in. Uh, My question is for you. I don't know if you know about the trucking industry. I do. Okay, what do you think about FMCSA? Do you think the people that work at, at FMCSA should hold be a Class A CDL holder? Because that's, of that's the fact that... That's fairly technical. I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Okay, because of the fact that FMCSA, the people that operate that, they only ha- they went to college. They haven't been a real truck driver over the road, which I am a truck driver. And right now, end of this year, the, the, the e- ELDs, uh, the electric... Electronic log uh, device mandates go in the, by December. 
My question is, do you think it's right for the federal government to be basically telling us truckers how we should be driving? Because now the computers are telling us when we can take our half an hour breaks, when we can sleep. I, th and I think regulations that hurt small business owners, people who work for small businesses, who are doing their jobs and supporting their families, I'm not for those. Okay. So I, I don't know the specifics, but if you're telling me that this regulation, I, you know, I'd have to think of what the goal of it is, but in general, if it's making it hard for you to do your job, it's it, it really does. So that's what I care about. Okay, I, I think regulations I can be overly burdensome on small businesses. I, would like I think big companies hire lots of people to deal with them in small business groups. Okay, I would look in further with the FMCA, yes. SA, with the ELD mandates, because right now, it, it's it's really hard. It's it's killing our clocks, right. and we make a, my, uh, we make a, a per mile, yep. and at this point in time, I think uh, more, more truckers be happy with an hourly wage at $35 an hour. Yeah, I agree and, with that. And right now, I make more than that. But I'm losing my miles because of this new ELDs. I've lost 100 miles a day. So it, it's put a cap on how much you can drive. Yes. Yes. And how many hours can you drive now? I can only drive 11 hours in a 14-hour uh, work period. I get a 14-hour clock. But when we are at the shipper receiver, our 14 hours is drink is uh, so you're, you're losing three hours a day. Oh, more than that. Yeah. I can be at, I can be at a warehouse for eight hours, and I just lost all my almost all my drive. How many hours a week do you want to drive? You know, I want to drive. You know, I want to drive eleven, but I don't want my fourteen hour clock to dwindle when I'm at a shipper receiver at a dock. So I I don't know the act the specifics of this, but what I do know is that I don't I don't want regulations to prevent hardworking Americans from supporting their families mm -hmm. unless there's got a really really good reason for it. And so I'd have to look at what the reason behind this yeah. is, because I, I would be dishonest with you if I just kind of... Right. I, but I can tell you, I think about it. I think a lot of regulations in this country hurt small businesses. And small business people. I don't know if you're an independent or anything. Well, I, I try for it. Oh, got it. But, um, you know, I just want to make sure working, hardworking Americans support their families. I don't know the other side of this issue, so I can't give you an answer. But I, I promised you I'd get back to you and give me your name. Okay. Uh, give it to me. And in that exchange, you can tell, like uh, most of politicians, I feel, this is my personal opinion, that he deflects. He doesn't really answer the question. He says he knows about truck and regulation and then turns around and deflects the answer. Well, I don't want, you know, small businesses. We're not talking small businesses. We're talking the trucking industry. Do you know about regulations or don't you? Answer the question. You said you did. Well, then how come you don't know what he's talking about then? Don't sit there and deflect. Um in trying, yeah, he's trying to answer the question as best as possible. But you know, answer the question. Don't sit there and try to deflect. Are you going to change regulations or not? Well, in the trucking industry, that's what this gentleman, you know, is a truck driver from Iowa, is asking him. And well, I don't want you know small businesses to be overregulated because of their families. Like I said, we're not talking about small businesses. We're talking about trucking. You know, come on, Democrats, let's answer the doggone questions here. So in other news, a group presses F FMCSA to study whether ELDs are making truckers speed to beat the clock. According to a group, 90% of all polled res uh, respondents say that they have resorted to speeding or observed an increase in the frequency of others speeding since the ELD mandate went into effect. Well, I wasn't a part of this poll. When they do these polls, you know, I never get involved in them. I mean, I never hear about them. A trucking industry trade group has asked FMCSA to examine the connection between the ELD mandate and the number of fatal traffic crashes caused by speeding. The Small Business Transportation Coalition, which I've never heard of, has issued a call for transportation department officials to look into whether there has been an uptick in speeding related deaths involving commercial vehicles since the ELD mandate went into effect. The SBTC, their abbreviation, cites a Facebook poll that found that nearly 90% of respondents said, quote, yes to the question, quote, drivers, have you resorted to speeding or observed an increase in the frequency of other drivers speeding now that ELDs are in effect? Um... 89.7% said yes, 10.3% said no. 
In a, a recent news release, SBTC asked the FMCSA to examine the 2018 crash data to determine whether fatal truck crashes caused by speeding are increasing. The SBTC pointed to two years ago, or four years, let's see, wait a minute, 2063 years ago, excuse me, there again, I'm half awake, um, crash data that showed that for fatal crashes caused by speeding happened about 12 times more frequently than fatal crashes caused by drowsy driving for both passenger and commercial vehicles. The ELD mandate went into effect in December 2017 with hard enforcement in the spring of 2018. SBTC leader James Lamb has issued a call for truckers to use Twitter to try to force the FMCSA to address the issue of speeding and ELDs. Lamb wrote in a recent article entitled, It's the end of the ELD era as we know it and I feel fine. That FMCSA will now have to reconcile whether the 2018 fatality rates that will come out in December 2019 will actually show those 26 lives saved per year as FMCSA has speculated or many, many more lives lost due to increased speeding by drivers trying to beat the clock because they are paid by the mile. If that is the case, then we will suggest that FMCSA will have failed in its safety mission and we will be there to say, I told you so, end quote. The SBTC is a Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit with more than 14,000 transportation members that seeks to promote and protect the interests of small businesses in the transportation industry, according to the group's website. Well, no wonder I ain't heard of them. So, I don't know why this made CDL life, but a Prius goes airborne after a, oh, I, I get it now, after a car hauler gets hammered by a train. That's what happens when he tried to beat a train. A bystander captured video footage of a train versus truck crash that happened in El Paso, Texas. The video was captured just after 4 o'clock in the afternoon on August 12th. Um... The, a car hauler loaded up with a single Prius is on the railroad tracks when a Union Pacific train comes barreling through, sending the car flying off the truck. There is currently no official word on why the crash occurred or whether anyone was hurt. Um, the video is in Spanish, and it's since gone viral. And as a reporting writing this um, CDL Life reporting this. Uh, the video has been viewed over 100,000 times. And in other news, so as I mentioned earlier um, in the program about our cafe store, I want to tell you a little bit more about Harry's Razors for Men if you haven't heard about them. And also their sister company, uh, Flamingo Razors for Women. Harry's believes that you shouldn't have to compromise when it comes to products you use. So the razors are designed to be effective and provide a great shaving experience. They have over 600 engineers, designers, craftsmen, and chemists that make their products from some of the finest materials and ingredients to ensure that they perform as well as they can. They bought a blade company in Germany that has been manufacturing blades since 1920. So you, you will get a close, clean shave every time without paying high prices. They don't have any little flexi balls or any little fantastic handles and all this kind of stuff. And for women, they have flamingo razors. They also provide a close, comfortable shave for women's legs and underarms without getting all those pimply bumps after you shave. Flamingo razors are made just like Harry's, using high-quality steel and make their long-lasting blades. So if you want a close, comfortable shave whether you're a guy or a gal check out harry's and flamingo razors on our wellness page at our website at julia's truck at cafe.com under the store tab of wellness now in other news a fire consumes a house the truck in an oversized load move gone wrong louisiana firefighters are investigating an oversized load move that ended in a serious property damaging blaze on Monday, August 12th, around 2.30 in the afternoon. This incident was reported on Old Spanish Trail Road in Scott, Louisiana. Firefighters reported to the scene they found a house and a semi-truck that was hauling it both engulfed in flames, with live power lines arcing on the metal roof of the house. 
Apparently, they touched the power lines. That ain't good. Firefighters were able to put out the truck fire quickly, but say they had to wait for the power company to disconnect the power before continuing to fight the fire consuming the house. There were no injuries reported, which is a good thing. Firefighters say that their initial investigation indicates that the truck driver attempted to maneuver around a tree on his right when this caused the roof of the house to make contact with the power lines. The electrical current caused the truck tires to catch fire and then the fire then spread to the truck and the house. The Scott Fire Department is still investigating. A local news station reports that the overside load route was approved and that Louisiana State Police were escorting the load. The house was so badly damaged by the fire that it was scheduled to be demolished the next day. Wow. And I mean that in a good way. It's just my head is so stopped up on this, this broadcast. I'm sorry about that. Driver, uh, there again, another fatality. Driver found dead after a truck, after two days of being in his truck at a truck stop. And the cause of death is unclear. Police say that they discovered the body of a semi-truck driver in a California truck driver, a truck stop. Let me start this again. Police say that they discovered the body of a semi-truck driver at a California truck stop after his employer called for a welfare check. Authorities were called to the pilot truck stop in Hesperia, California, just after 9.30 on Sunday, August 11th. Police say that they were responding to an employer who was concerned about the welfare of the driver after the truck did not move from the truck stop parking lot for two days. When officers arrived on scene, they found the driver deceased in the cab of the truck. It isn't clear how long he was dead. The identity of the truck driver has not been released. Police have revealed few details about the truck driver's death, and it isn't clear at the time of this writing whether a foul play is suspected. An autopsy will be conducted to determine the cause of death. And I will be checking back on this here in the days to follow to give you an update on this story. Now, y'all are going to love this one. A robot dispatcher and a self-driving truck just sent to load without any human involvement. The week of August 9th, two companies say that their technologies were able to work together successfully to broker and transport a load without any human help. Now, back in July, Starsky Robots and LoadSmart issued an announcement about the trucking industry's first autonomous dispatch and delivery. The company say that this marks, quote, the first time an autonomous company and a digital broker have collaborated to price, book, and load a shipment without any human involvement, end quote. The company say that, quote, they were able to automatically dispatch an autonomous truck to haul freight, have successfully priced, tendered and booked via LoadSmart and then picked up and delivered the shipment using Starsky self-driving technology. The integration of LoadSmart's AI-powered pricing and load magic technology with Starsky's API meant no human intervention was required. Stefan Seltz X. Mocker, CEO and founder of Starsky Robotics, said it's not uncommon for a traditional trucking company to have five full-time employees involved in dispatching each truck for each load. By integrating e-brokers like LoadSmart, we are eliminating all back-office human intervention and making the ship shipment process seamless while focusing on ensuring the safety of driverless trucks. With Starsky's Hutch API, which was also announced today, will be able to autonomously dispatch autonomous loads on a regular basis. Now, I reported on this back a few weeks ago. They say that it was an autonomous truck, but if I remember right, the Starsky Robotics had someone um, remotely driving the truck that it wasn't fully autonomous. So that's misinformation right there. There again, my personal opinion. This is my show. I can have my personal opinion. There was someone in Jacksonville that was remotely driving the truck that was supposed to be autonomous. And he had a steering wheel. He had the gas and the brake um, and shifting the whole nine yards. So it, that's not autonomous in my eyes. I don't know. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments below. Now, FMCSA, long-awaited hours of service changes are finally here supposedly. Now, I've been hearing from um, 
other drivers, and I know I'm disgruntled, that we keep hearing this over and over and over again for the last several years. You know, that the changes are coming, the changes are coming. When are they coming? When are they proposed? And all this kind of stuff. But they're here. They're almost here. The changes are coming. So here we go again. But at least this time, this is went through the White House, where before it didn't even make it to the White House yet. Excuse me while I take a swig of coffee. After months of delay, the FMCSA has finally published their proposed changes to truck drivers' hours of service regulations. The hours of service notice proposed rulemaking, NPRM, was published on Wednesday, August 14th. The FMCSA says that they believe that the new hour HOS rules will give truckers more flexibility while maintaining highway safety. Quote, FMCSA wants drivers and all CMV stakeholders to share their thoughts and opinions on the proposed changes to hours of service rules that we are putting forward today. We listen directly to the concerns of drivers for rules that are safer and have more flexibility, and we have acted. We encourage everyone to review and comment on this proposal, end quote, said Administrator Raymond P. Martinez. The FMCSA proposed changes to hours of service are as follows. The agency proposes to increase safety and flexibility for the 30-minute break rule by tying the break rule requirement to 8 hours of driving time without an interruption for at least 30 minutes and allowing the break to be satisfied by a driver using on-duty, not driving status, rather than off-duty. I will go into more a little bit more detail if you would like to contact me and discuss these rules and your thoughts about these rules i'll greatly appreciate it um i you could go ahead and uh shoot me an email with your phone number and we could set up a time where we can discuss this live and um it will be on a special edition show that um if you don't mind being recorded where we could sit down and talk about this um the second one the agency proposes to modify the sleeper birth exemption to allow drivers to split their required 10 hours off duty into two periods one period of at least seven consecutive hours in the sleeper and the other period of not less than two consecutive hours either off duty or in the sleeper neither period would count against the driver's 14 hour driving window in other words, that would halt the 14-hour driving window. So we can split it up from 8 and 2 or 2 and 8. And also we could have an option of 7 and 3 or 3 and 7. So now we have four different, really, you know, two different ways to do it. The agency proposes to allow one off-duty break of at least 30 minutes, but not more than three hours that would pause a driver's truck driver's 14-hour driving window provided the driver takes 10 consecutive hours off duty at the end of the work shift. Now, I was under the impression, now reading this, and I also am going to go to the FMCS site, but reading this, I'm under the impression that this could only be in inclement weather. And also, at the end of this article, I will go in and um, give more commentary on this. So let me go ahead and, and finish reading through before, and I'll comment on the end. Next, the agency proposes to modify the adverse driving conditions exemption by extending by two hours the maximum window during which driving is permitted. So they're going to extend it out two hours. Next, the agency proposes a change to short haul exemption available to certain commercial drivers by lengthening the driver's maximum on duty time from 12 to 14 hours and extending the distance limit within which the driver may operate from 100 air miles to 150 air miles. The FMCSA notes that their proposed rule changes are, quote, crafted to improve safety on the nation's roadways. The proposed rule would not increase driving time and would continue to prevent CMV operators from driving more than eight consecutive hours without at least a 30-minute change in duty status, end quote. The FMCSA has been at work on new hours of service regulations since August of 2018 when it published an advance notice of proposed rulemaking an ANPRM and asked for public comment on several aspects of the HOS reform. The FMCSA received more than 5,200 comments, many of them 
coming from truck drivers asking for relief from the strict regulations that they say could force them to drive while fatigued. Regulatory reports from the DOT initially li listed June 7, 2019 as the date for the NPRM publication. The publication date was then pushed back to July 31st, but the agency didn't meet that deadline either. The FMC is, SA is accepting public comment on the hours of service changes for 45 days. That's a month and a half. Remember, this is proposed changes again. You can uh, click here in the article that will be in the show notes to learn how you can provide your comment to the agency. After that 45 days, it may take a couple of more months before the changes would go into effect because they could go ahead in that after that 45 days then they could go in and may tweak it some more yet all right so now for my commentary on this now i've had several questions from drivers asking me about this extending this 30 minute break to three hours I'm thinking that after these rules go into effect, it will be up to each individual company to mandate and to change your ELD in what they see fit. And if, for example, a question uh, was asked to me of, say you're in a dock and it's taking longer than 30 minutes to load you but under three hours to load you say a couple of hours and you go off duty is that going to halt your 14 hour window according to rereading this a second time yes it would initially i thought that that 30 minutes that more than three hours of off duty break would only be regarding if there was an accident or if it was adverse weather conditions not if you were in a loading dock or at Walmart or something like that. It, you know, then it would, you would still have whatever drive time that you had when you went in there that would stop it. And, but after three hours, then your 14 hour clock would start up again. And, um, how they propose to modify the adverse driving conditions exemption by extending it two hours, the maximum window during which driving would, would be permitted. So, if you, you would, I would like to have um, my listeners call in or arrange, a schedule a time with me. That's best for both of us. If you want to stop and talk about this, and what are your thoughts about these proposed changes? I would really love to hear it from you, and I'm really serious. I want to do a show, a call-in show, with drivers calling in, and um, we sit down and discuss this. That uh, to get drivers' opinions, so other listeners can get your opinion and what you think about this. So please uh, shoot me an email at info at juliastruckatcafe.com or even message me on Facebook and let me know when it would be a good time and, and drop me a phone number or you know we can uh, we'll get together when is a good time that we can sit down and talk about this. So another news: a severe storm blew over 20 trucks in West Kansas. And this is some of the weather that I was talking about early when I first started the show. A heavy storm in western Kansas was repo reportedly responsible for blowing over multiple semi-trucks and temporarily shutting down Interstate 70. Authorities in Ellis County, Kansas said at least 20 semis were blown over during a storm on Tuesday, August 13th. And I, it happened with me on Monday, Monday night, early Tuesday morning. Wind gusts of 80 miles an hour were reported. The Hayes Police Department said that the storm caused high waters, downed power lines, debris and hazards in the roadways, as well as power outages. To make matters worse, Kansas State Troopers said that a high voltage power line had fallen on top of some of the semi-trucks on 70, and there was no word on driver injuries at that time. Transportation officials shut down a stretch of 70 in both directions from Waukenny and Hayes had blown over trucks. And then it was reopened on Wednesday morning. More than 7,000 Kansas residents lost power as a result of that storm. So I was in Missouri when it really hit. And then uh, there again, it was chasing me. And there's also a video that you can see in the article that will be in the show notes. And here's what truckers really think about the hours of service changes. Here are some of the 
uh, remarks. And like I said, please um, contact me and we'll discuss it. I don't have a problem discussing it at all. Chris says that they're even more confusing than we have already. Billy says, so the big hope was more flexibility with the sleeper berth, which didn't happen. They gave you the option of a 3-7 split instead of a 2-8 split, which really does nothing. No, Billy, it's both. At least stopping to fuel will satisfy part of the 30-minute break. Now the bottom feeder steering wheel holders will maybe not hold a fuel pump up as long. Well, you know, that, that, that last part of that comment is kind of unnecessary. Um, Timmy says, a stupid 30-minute rule needs done away with for local drivers. We run 15-plus stops a day. We're in and out of the truck 30-plus times a day. That 30-minute break crap is useless to us. Michael says, eliminating the 14-hour clock would have been more effective and less complicated. Ira says, they didn't change anything. Denny says, well, it's as clear as mud now. Bill says, I don't see these changes helping you over the road drivers much, other than being able to stop and fuel and call that a break. Sorry. Us local drivers, delivery guys got a couple of wins, though. Paul says, they gave us nothing. Useless, useless, useless. Christopher says, just love people making rules that have no idea how to do my job. And more flexibility in sleep reverse? That's hilarious. 3-7 from 2-8. I'm understanding it that... You could do both. You could do a two, a eight, and two, two and eight, three and seven, or seven and three. That's how I'm understanding it. I think they actually. Scott says I think they actually listened this time. Been driving thirty years and I've never been this stressed or tired at times with these regs as they stand now. Sound like there's some good flexibility in the new regs. Um, so there again, you know, you could click on the click here link that's in the article. It'll be in the show notes to uh, leave your comment on these new regs. I greatly appreciate all of you who tune in every week to listen to me here babble on the cafe. If you are new, a new listener to the cafe, welcome and thank you so much for listening. If you would like to check us out at the bottom of every episode on our website at juliastruckatcafe.com, under cafe menu and in shows tab, there are links that I have listed on where you can find, where else you could find me, like iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, and many more. If you wouldn't mind liking, if you're on Facebook, if you give us a like, that would be great. If you're on Twitter, we have a page on Twitter. Also, if on, like I said, on YouTube, if um, none of those appeal to you and you'd like to follow me on YouTube. That's great. If you have an Android phone, you could find me on Google Play Store under the podcast app. On YouTube, I share recipes, videos, and uh, also a page on our website of stupid things that drivers do. If you'd like rather not do all that and you would still like to be able to access the articles yourself, I'd ask that you sign up to our email list. And if you don't want to, you come to our website and it kind of drops down in front of you. Just click on the no thanks or the X out and then that'll take you right to the show. Um, I could send, if you join our email list, I could send you the show notes, the articles that I talk about each and every week right to your inbox. This way you don't have to keep coming back and try to dig around in the website. I appreciate you do. But, you know, if you're, I know everybody has busy lives, so I'm trying to make it as simple as possible and give everybody a lot of options. In the future, if I have new things coming out and you're on my email list, you'll have priority in getting those new things, like the new specials if I'd be having in the cafe store when I'm running, you know, different, maybe different holiday specials on apparel and that kind of thing. Before I forget, it would be great if you'd leave a comment what you think about the show on any of the episodes, either on Facebook where I post them, on Twitter, or there's a comment box on the bottom of the episode on the website. I read each and every one, and also it would be great if you have any kind of ideas for upcoming shows. Please, you can email me, and you can contact me at info at juliastruckingcafe.com. That's info at juliastruckingcafe.com. Again, please um, go ahead. Feel free to comment about these new hours of, rule, uh, uh, hours of service 
proposed rule changes. I definitely want to have some audience participation in this. This would be like totally huge and totally great on this. So please uh, feel free to leave your comments and those kind of things like I described. Thank you so much for listening to me and I got to get back to work. So uh, all of y'all have a blessed day. Keep the shiny side up. Use your headlights in adverse weather. And please, please, please use your turn signal. It doesn't cost anything. Please use your turn signal. Y'all have a blessed day and we'll see you next time. Yeah.